Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we switch gears and work on the engine for my 1984 Grand National Astro Roof. In the previous episode, we put in our new camshaft, we put on the timing cover, and we installed the valve train. We're running a 204-214 cam. This was a comp cam, but now it's an Edelbrock cam, same specs. But I learned from a subscriber that I needed to do two things. I needed to swap out the naturally aspirated head gaskets for turbo regal ones. And then I also needed to check my push rod preload. Now there's a video from Steve V on how to do just that. So I won't walk you through it in painstaking detail. I will link that below if you're interested in doing something like that, if you're rebuilding your engine as well, or if you wanted to learn more. So I've got my push rod checker. I've got replacement head gaskets. And we're ready to tear back into this thing because as soon as we're done with that, all we have to do then is just put on the intake gaskets, put on valve covers, and this engine is ready to go into the 84. And to be fair, it has been a while, so let me catch you up on what was going on. My 84 Grand National was the first Grand National that I rebuilt back in 2019. It ran, it drove, but it didn't run well. And I found out that the coolant passageways along the side of the block, underneath the freeze plugs on both sides, were cracked from front to back. Basically, somebody used water in the coolant passageways and they let the block freeze. And due to expansion and contraction, the block cracked. So basically the block is useless. And I will save the block in case anybody wants numbers matching. I know these cars are worth a lot and they're increasing in value, but we need to put something in the car that's gonna be reliable, that's not gonna leak coolant and all of that. So I found three Grand National engines, VIN A engines that were meant for naturally aspirated vehicles. But with some simple tweaks, you can get them to not only work in your hot air car, but you can also get it to work in your 86 and 87. There's plenty of posts on it on the Turbo Regal forum. I'll probably link those in the description if you're interested in reading those well. So here we are. We found those Grand National engines. We know we have a problem with our 84. I took one of those three engines, put it on this engine stand and started looking into it. Now these engines were rebuilt in the early 90s. So they've been sitting for a really long time. They look great on the inside, no problems. But I wanted a little bit more power. So I swapped this Edelbrock cam in and it also came with lifters. So now you're officially caught up. We need to tear it back down so we can take care of the push rods and the head gasket. And then we'll be well on our way to finishing this engine and getting it in the car. So we got the head off and things look really clean. Looking down in here, it looks like they did really good work. These pistons look new. They're 30 over, we expected that. Over on the head side, we're looking at brand new valves over here, so things look good. And we can just swap this out. Looking at the parts interchange list, it looks like these gaskets and the turbo ones, they appear to have the same stock number, but I don't wanna take any chances. So I do have turbo regal gaskets available. So what I'll do is I'll just pop these off, clean up the service a little bit, and I'll get the replacement ones in here. All right, and here are our replacement gaskets. So we're all good on this front. We'll pop these in and we'll be good to go. So as you can see, we're back over on the block. I've got my valve train components all laid out exactly the way they came off of the engine. I've got my new Felpro gasket in, part number 8723, Papa Tango 1, and we're ready to put back on the head. So here we go, we line up our dowel pins. All right, sweet. I'm gonna use the old bolt just for a second. I just wanna make sure it's secure. I don't want the head to drop but we are switching these bolts out. And because these old bolts are torque to yield bolts, we can't reuse them. Now, a little bit of information for you hot air guys. If you have a 14 bolt oil pan, they're not torque to yield bolts, so you can reuse them. But this is a 20 bolt oil pan, so we've got torque to yield bolts that we can't reuse. 
swapped over to ARP head bolts. I ended up going bolts over studs just because I'm used to bolts. I'm not used to studs, but maybe on the next one. Part number is 123-3601. It's a different part number for the hot air 14 bolt oil pan bolts. So keep that in mind. But you have three different sets of bolts in this package of varying lengths. And you have a bunch of washers that you need to be able to put on. If you look real closely, you'll see that it's chamfered facing the bolt. And that's why you need to install them. And you also need to use assembly lubricant on the threads. That way you can get a really good torque spec when you're getting ready to put it back on. Also, I've already used this, but you gotta clean out your threads. So be sure to use a thread chaser when it comes time to rebolt everything back up. 7 16 is the diameter, and we'll just bolt everything back up real nice and easy, and we'll be on the way to our push rod length checker. Right now, all of the bolts are loose but we're gonna torque down everything using the factory sequence. However, ARP has their own torque setting that they want to use, so you gotta look at their instruction manual. And right in the corner here, we see that we gotta to torque them down to 70 foot-pounds in three equal steps. So what we'll do is, we'll do it using this diagram that's on gntype.org and torque everything right down. We'll repeat all of this on the other side, and then we'll be all set. are bolted down, everything is looking great there. We're moving on to set our push rod length. What I'm going to do is, I'm gonna use this as a straight edge, come across the top of my valves, and make sure that with a 10,000s feeler gauge, nothing gets through on any of them. And if that works, that lets me know that I can use the same push rod length across all of them. I did it on the other side, everything looks good. This one right here is the only variation across all of them. And it's still not bad enough to warrant a 10,000s feeler gauge. So I'm gonna rock it anyway. All right, so now the heads are on, everything is torqued. I've got my push rod checker in the number one slot and I got my rocker arms bolted in. Let me show you what's next. I'm rotating until I get this valve open. That'll let me know that this one is closed. Great part about these engines is I have a big hole here that I can see when the cam is at the top of the lobe. And on the 109 blocks, just take a look at the lifter and see when it's at its highest point. There we go. Good there. So let's measure. I'll rotate until this has no more movement. That's what's called zero lash. So that, still got it. All right, there we go, zero lash. So now we can unbolt our three bolts here and see how many turns it took to get this type of length. All right, so let's pop it out. Be careful not to twist it. Let me count my turns. So I counted 15.5 turns at 50 thousandths each, plus 7.8, plus the preload that we're looking for, roughly 30 thousandths, brings us to the grand total that's on the screen. Comparing the pushrod that I measured versus the stock pushrod, we're really, really close. I have 8.605 total, that includes the preload, and I have just a little bit more, 30 thousandths more on the pushrod that came out of the car. That is acceptable. As long as we're under 50 thousandths, we're good to go. So I'm gonna rock with this one. And now we have a plan of action. We're going to reuse the push rods that came with the engine. I can now put back the rest of our valve train and can pull in the car to get ready for engine removal. I have all three of my favorite toys out today. Brooklyn, AKA Fetty Wap in the back, as you can see, I only got one headlight there. 
I uh, got Asher Roof over here getting ready for her engine transplant. And I got T-Top right here. There's a local car show about 30 minutes away. I'm gonna hop in this and see what's up. And that's all there is to it. Thank you for tuning in this week. Appreciate you guys as always. On the next episode, we get Asheroof pulled in and we get right to work on getting the old motor out and getting the new one set in place. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. See you next week. Oh, 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 oh.